Start out this build by rubbing the foam mating surfaces together. This will remove any excess material. Then add glue to one side, press the two parts together, and then release them. The glue is a contact adhesive, so we'll wait 5 to 10 minutes to press them back together once cured. Repeat this process with the wings. I'm here gluing the wing tip. It is very important to be sure the rear of the wing lines up, not the front. This will allow the Elevon a proper hinge. Again, press them together and release. Repeat this process with the wing core as well. Press together, work the glue around, then release and put them to the side. The last part to glue are the drag reduction skirts. Those are the two somewhat triangular shaped pieces in the kit. I'm measuring an inch and a quarter away from the side and I'm going to remove this section. The reason for that is it doesn't fit under the fuselage. Use a sharp knife, cut through it, and remove it. Drag reduction skirts need trimmed down as well as they're not meant to run the full length of the wing. I'm trimming mine at five inches, but anywhere between four and six inches works. Again, cut the end off and remove it. It is important that both drag reduction skirts be the same size, so use the one you just cut as a template to cut the other one. The last step is to adhere the drag reduction skirts to the wings. Apply glue to the small edge of the drag reduction skirt and attach it to the wing one inch and a fourth inward from the outside of the wing. This is because, once again, they don't fit underneath the fuselage. Again, press the surfaces together, then release. After 10 to 15 minutes, the glue will have set up and become almost dry to the touch. This is when you want to take the parts and press them back together. I'm starting with the fuselage, then moving on to the wings, wing tips, and then the drag reduction skirts. Again, on the wings, it's most important for the rear of the wings to line up rather than the front so that the Elevon will have a proper hinge. Now we can install the spars. We'll start here with the main stress spar. Measure two inches back from the tip of the wing at the edge and make a straight line across the wing. Cut a slice along this line. You're going to repeat this for both the top and the bottom. To cut a slice, you can use a knife, but I have a hot work tool made from a cheap soldering gun and a piece of music wire folded into a loop. This cuts a slightly wider channel that makes it a little bit easier to get the glue and the spar in. But you have to use care here as you don't want to cut too deep. Once you've cut your channel, fill it with glue and then immediately install your spar. Be careful not to run your fingers down the spar as you will get terrible splinters from the fiberglass. Cut one of your remaining spars down into three equal sections 16 inches long. These will be the rear strain spars. These get installed at the rear of the wing approximately one inch in front of the bevel that holds the elevon. You'll notice here that I'm not following the rear edge of the wing completely but extending more towards the middle. The reason for this is this will get another spar in the rear across the center. Install the spar on either side just like you did the main stress spar. Strike it with a straight edge, cut it with a knife, then embed glue into the slot you just cut, and then embed the spar. I find it's easiest to stress the spar into a bow-like shape and press it in bit by bit to get it down into the groove. Be careful, again, not to rub your fingers along the spar because they will give you splinters. The last spar to be installed is the rear stress spar. Simply take a straight edge and measure end to end along the wing, cut with a knife, and just as you did before, embed the glue and then embed the spar. The spar is likely going to be longer than the channel you have just cut, so once you embed it, simply cut off the end. Once the glue on the top side of the spars has dried to the touch, flip the wing over and repeat the same process on the bottom, lining the spars up as close as you can to where they are on the top. This forms an I-beam and makes the plane's wing extremely stiff. The process is, of course, the same. Measure, cut, add glue, then embed your spar. Again, the key is to get the spars to line up right over top of each other, or at least as close as you can. This will make sure that the I-beam effect is at its maximum strength and will not cause the wing to twist. 
The remaining spar parts can be used to make the fuselage stronger. In a crash, the fuselage will usually break right at the wing, so this is the area you want to cover. I'm using a hot work tool, but a knife works just fine. You'll want the, the spar to go past that break point, which is effectively a lever. Repeat this on both sides of the fuselage, again creating that I-beam effect to strengthen the fuselage significantly. Once the glue is cured, it's time to laminate the airplane. Lay the laminate over the wing and then start in the middle and work your way to the edges. Use a good amount of pressure down on the iron to make sure the laminate has adhered. I'm using a small covering iron, but in all honesty, a clothing iron works just fine. Just be careful not to turn the temperature up too high where it's going to melt the foam. If you don't know where that point is, use one of the scrap pieces you cut off from the drag reduction skirts to figure out what temperature the iron should be set so that it doesn't melt the foam. To wrap the wing, I find it's easiest to just cut a slit into the laminate everywhere there's a joint. This will allow the laminate to fold over without any extra wrinkles. Repeat this on both the front and the back. You'll want to pull the laminate tight to the wing when laminating any section, especially over the rear here. The reason for this is this needs to be a hinge for the Elevon. Also, when I'm going over the back crease, I don't worry too much about over melting. I just want to verify that I maintain a bevel so that the Elevon can move down. Fuselage should be laminated for strength as well. Notice that I'm doing this with the center plug installed, but it is not glued in place. The reason for this is after it's laminated, I will remove the center plug to make it easier to get my electronics in. When doing the laminate, again, you want to cut slits in all of the angular areas to make sure it folds over evenly. Also, don't laminate that plug. That will make sure that it's easy to remove, as I have just done here. To install the Elevon, start by trimming them so they fit the contour of the wing. The wood is fairly soft here, so a knife does just fine. I prefer making several moderate scores than one very, very deep score, as it seems to do better with the wood. The elevons are simply laminated to the airplane. I just cut a small section and extended it onto the wing past and past the elevon about five inches. I then work the top side down to make sure the hinge is good and tight. Once the top is laminated, I'll trim the sides off to make sure that the elevon has room to go somewhere. From here, flip the elevon upside down and laminate the bottom, creating a hinge. You'll want to use a good amount of heat along the base here, along this fold, and the reason for that is you don't want the Elevon to come loose in flight, so you want a good bond right here. Then simply add, bond the remainder of the laminate to the bottom of the wing. The stabilizer fin should be installed 5 inches from the center of the wing. I know I'm only measuring 4.5 here, but I changed the design slightly since this model was made. Simply slide the fin up into place along this line, then mark where the tabs align with the wing. You'll then simply cut out these tabs as they will get embedded in the foam while the rest of the fin rides along the foam. It is important that your cut be absolutely vertical here as this is what's going to hold the fin upright. If your cut isn't straight, the stabilizer will lean either inward or outward. Also, the cuts must be in a straight line. If they aren't, the winglet will warp. Slide the stabilizers in place and embed the tabs into the slits you've just made. Then measure the exact same distance on the bottom, again marking out where the tabs are. Remove your stabilizers and then use a knife to cut a vertical slot into the wing. Again, they have to be in a straight line and your cuts need to be vertical as this is what makes sure the stabilizers are straight. To install the control horns, I find it's best to mount them on the top side of the wing rather than the bottom so they don't get broken off in a crash. I'm, I'm putting the control horn approximately one third of the way down the Elevon instead of at the very edge. This eliminates tip flutter and other problems. The control horn itself makes a pretty good template for where to drill the holes, and to drill them, I'm just using a screwdriver. To install the servos, start by making a part of a control rod. That is, attach it to the control horn and line it up with the servo. Then simply trace your servo out onto the wing surface and cut it out with a knife. 
Since I'm using very large servos here, I actually am going to cut all of the way through the wing. If you're using smaller servos, simply cut the rectangular box out and pry it out with your knife or a screwdriver. From here, the servo is simply glued in place by adding glue to the sides of the servo and then sliding it in the hole I just made. The control rod can be cut to length with a pair of needle nose pliers or diagonals. Then simply slide the clevis over the other end, screw it into place, and then attach it to your servo. You want approximately 1 8 to 3 16 of an inch of reflex in the Elevon. That is, the rear of the Elevon should be between 1 8 and 3 16 of an inch above your drag reduction skirt. The servo wire can simply be buried in the wing. Just cut a slice across the center of the wing and then tuck your wire into it. I'm using my hot work tool to make the slot wider, but a ballpoint pen also works just fine. Simply tuck your wire in and that way it doesn't create any additional drag. For clarity in the video, I am gluing my stabilizers in right now. Usually you'll do this after the wing is installed in the main fuselage. Simply add glue to the slots you had previously cut and then push the uh, stabilizer into place and then press down the teeth so that they enter the slots. Once in place, use the glue to trace along the edge and make sure that the fins are vertical. To install the wing into the fuselage, add a heavy amount of glue along all of the surfaces of the fuselage. This wing is a very tight fit and the fuselage will need to be flexed in order for the wing to fit. I find it's easiest to slide the front of the wing in first, then flip it over and then flex the back out of the way. The foam is very flexible, so don't worry too much about breaking it. Then press it down into place. Now the central fin can be installed. This is installed the same way that the two outer fins are, except that it doesn't go along the bottom. Simply trace out where the tabs line up on the fuselage and cut them out with a knife. Then fill them full of glue and embed your fin. Once embedded, trace glue around the outside to make sure it stays in place. The motor mount is simply glued to the flat spot on the back of the fuselage. You'll want a heavy amount of glue to be applied here to make sure it adheres well. Now it's time to visit the fuselage plug. This is where I'm going to mount my speed control and my servos. I'm simply figuring out how long they are and then cut a section out of the bottom of the fuselage plug to make sure they have a place to sit. I'm cutting through both sides and then simply removing the piece of foam. And of course, this is going to need a little bit of doctoring up because of course, my cuts did not line up perfectly. The battery on the airplane is used to obtain the center of gravity. Measure back on the wing 2.25 or two and a quarter inches and make a cross. From here, balance the airplane on your fingertips on those crosses and move the battery forward and backward to figure out where it balances. From here, mark where the battery fit in the fuselage on the plug. You're going to do the same as you did for the electronics here, but for the battery. Simply trace it out and then cut it out all the way with a knife. The plug is now simply glued into place. Add a heavy amount of glue to the sides of the plug and also to the inside of the fuselage and then spread the fuselage with your fingers and try to slide the plug in place. You'll notice here that I've trimmed off the section where it would meet the wing as it won't go all the way through here. So passing my servo wires through the hole I've made, spreading the fuselage, I simply drop it into place up the plane's throws, launching it, and getting it flying will be available in a future video. I'm IB Crazy, and thanks for watching.